there are volcanoes everywhere in this country. Thirty-seven in total, and four of them are active. Let's go. Tens of thousands of people travel to Guatemala every year to visit the volcanoes. But to the people who live here, this is just part of their everyday life. As many tourists visit the volcanoes in awe of their beauty, it can be just as deadly. This is San Miguel Los Lotes. It was destroyed by the volcanic eruption in 2018, and it serves as a constant reminder that nature will always win. I wanted to learn more about what happened here, so I visited the site in Guatemala. are at Santo San Miguel Los Lotes, which as of right now exists as a cemetery or a holy site because of this natural disaster that happened here. So this natural disaster happened on June 3rd in 2018 when the volcano which I'm standing in front of, Volcán de Fuego, erupted and all the ash and the big giant boulders from the volcano came washing down as a river of lava so fast from the gravity that it buried this whole town and destroyed all the buildings here. But all the lava and all that hot ash carried its way down this road right here from the volcano and it just went so quickly down this town without much warning. People had no time to escape. A lot of them stayed inside their homes, and their homes are just filled now with ash. And this was very hot ash. That's what killed a lot of the people. And so now you just have this whole town that's been abandoned, including this building here. This could have been someone's home or business, and now it's gone. The volcano was actually pretty active the days coming up to June 3rd, but it was unfortunate on June 3rd that all that hot volcanic ash came flowing down this just like a river of lava. And a lot of rescue organizations did come out here to try to rescue a lot of the people that were trapped in the rubble while many of those were saved and rescued. A lot of them were already dead by the time they got here from the hot volcanic ash. And many of them were not able to be rescued. But only a few days after the disaster took place, the government declared the zone as a cemetery as the bodies were not able to be recovered and they rest here today still. So right now what I'm standing on top of is actually all the lava that came from the volcano up there, which is quite a distance away. And it's remarkable because I just came from walking on that flat piece of land and now I'm on this mountain, which five years ago, all this land wasn't here before. It was filled in by that volcanic mudslide that came from the, the lava flow. You see over there is so many rocks from the lava. It's remarkable that I'm standing on all this lava and even all that volcanic ash right there in that mound was not there before. And we're actually so close to the road. Uh, so the road actually was destroyed. And a local tells me that the road was closed for about six months. 
Eh, pasó varios meses, te sé decir que quizás como unos 5 o 6 meses cerrado porque es una cantidad de material sí. increíble. ¿no? It took the Guatemalan government 25 million dollars to repair the road. This town sits right at the base of where that volcano goes. There's like a river you can see as it's burned down and just left all the rubble. Knowing that this volcano is active, why would someone put a town right next to it? Well, you see the volcano is not actually that close. Using Google Earth, we can map that the distance from the volcano to the town was actually 5.5 miles and the distance that the pyroclastic flow had to travel was about 6.15 miles to the town. Pyroclastic flow is the name for the hot volcanic gases and ash and material from the volcano and it descended an altitude of about 10,000 feet in just over six miles. This made it impossible for many people to escape its speed. <laughs> According to the Smithsonian Institution, about 54,000 people live within a 6.2 mile radius from Volcán de Fuego. Many people live around this land because the soil is so fertile, which makes it great for farmers and agriculture. When I visited San Miguel, I was only able to see a few standing buildings, while most of the site had many empty spaces. But it wasn't until looking at historical imagery that I was able to realize the gravity of the destruction that took place here. Looking at current day, much of the vegetation has already taken over. Rewind back to a few months before the eruption in 2018 and we can see a whole established town with at least 100 homes and businesses that had paved roads, electricity, and plumbing. The damage is seen from this imagery of five months after the eruption took place where the town is no longer recognizable. The government final figures are just that over 300 people have passed away with only about half being found. The other half were never able to be recovered. So this brings a question, can eruptions like these be predicted? And the answer is yes. Seismologists warned of a big eruption coming eight hours before it happened. The National Disaster Agency issued an evacuation notice a few hours after. However, this was only voluntary. Since this volcano erupts so frequently, up to 12 times per hour, many of the locals thought this to be a false alarm. By the time the government issued a mandatory evacuation order, it was already too late. So what do we see in the site now, five years after this natural disaster took place? Where now we see a lot of vegetation just taking over the space which was once here before. And it's just growing over this old urban setting. It felt quite somber being here. You know what was here and you know how many people this affected. It is a bit morbid knowing there still may be bodies under the surface. The old structures and signs of any life ever being here are slowly fading away. Soon, you won't even know there is a town here. I'm on Bocana Catanango right now getting footage for the documentary you guys just watched. I think I'm a little dirty, but if you guys liked watching that documentary, I enjoyed making it and I want to make many more. So give me a like and subscribe and let me know what else you guys like to see for future content.